Hey, good afternoon. Nate Reason from John Lancaster Toyota in Madison showing you the 2013 Scion FRS. This is a uh, joint venture between Toyota and Subaru to build a car that's affordable, that's a true sports car, and um, I don't know, something that's really cool, I guess. What's really interesting to me is uh, no one really knows whose stuff is in that car. It's funny, reading around the web, you see some guys go, oh, this is all Subaru's powertrain, hey, this is all Toyota's. But I'll share with you what I know um, in terms of who did what and blah, blah, blah. So my understanding is the design of the car, the sheet metal, the way it's bent, that was all done by Toyota. Uh, the engine is indeed Subaru's, and uh, there aren't a whole lot of things, like, for example, it's a 2-liter Subaru boxer engine, but that is an all-new engine that Subaru built for this car. Um, things like the block, the rods, the crank, the pistons, those are all new. So they don't, you know, it's not something that is directly related to, say, uh, you know, some other Subaru model. The D4S fuel injection system, which is both direct and port fuel injection, that's Toyota's fuel injection system. So this isn't a D4S motor, that's the fuel injection system. The transmission, specifically the automatic transmission, uh, that actually is Toyota's, and that came out of the Lexus IS350. If you drive this car, this is not your average Toyota transmission. And I say that not being mean to Toyota, because in Toyota, we're all about a nice, soft ride with shifts that are smooth and sexy, and you drive the car and go, man, this thing is amazing. This is a race car, and this is meant to be a race car. So when I show you the back seat, yeah, no kidding, there's no space. But hey, lay the seats down, and Toyota wanted you to be able to fit four racing tires and wheels in your helmet so you can go and take this thing to Tracte and flog it, and flog it likes. I had the opportunity to drive this at the launch in Joliet, Illinois, and, uh, and Toyota and Science said, dude, drive the car, power slide it, go fast, hit the brakes, have a good time, just don't crash it. And we did, and it is a power slide machine. I think if I say power slide, I think I'm dating myself. I believe the real term these days is called drifting, but it is a neat car. The concept for the car came from the Toyota Corolla AE86. It came from the old Toyota GT, which a lot of us go, the what? Yeah, the GT. I've never seen it. I've seen pictures of it, but I'm sure it was a pretty sweet car. But a couple neat facts about the outside of this car. Those 17-inch wheels are the lightest that Toyota's ever made, showing a further commitment to making a light car that likes to go around the corner sideways and is a very handily car. You've all heard it. The center of gravity on the car is around 18 inches. That puts it in on par with things from, oh, I don't know, Ferrari, Porsche. The weight distribution, 53% up front, 47 out back. While I'm like, dude, that's amazing, evidently that's the way it is when you build a supercar. So a lot of neat things went into this car. Toyota wanted this to be a real driver's car, something that you and I, normal folks that don't make a quarter a year, can buy, go out, have a good time with, and even go down the road and get reasonable gas miles. This thing gets like 30... Um, excuse me, about 30 miles per gallon overall, that's pretty darn good. Buy a Corolla? I don't think so. Let's buy an FRS. So uh, I wanted to point out on the Fender this uh, 86 emblem. There's a few things behind it. So obviously the number 86, AE86, Toyota GT86, whatever. Uh, the bore and stroke in that engine happened to be 86 millimeters. Of course, the pistons... It's a uh, boxer engines. The pistons oppose each other. And then the four blocks are the four wheels showing the car in a drift around a corner. That's, that's really what's behind that emblem. 17-inch wheels on my car are, ripped in, are wrapped in Michelin rubber. When we drove the car, it was nice rubber. Sticky enough to go around the corners. The car is going sideways. You can point it in a new direction and it finds it. So I thought it was a nice tire combination. I suspect folks at a real hardcore will want something a little better for, for track day, but for me, that's nice. LED tail lights on the top there. The backup lights are the white ones on the bottom. The red triangle, just a reflector. It actually isn't a brake light, but it still looks good. I suspect there will be some aftermarket accessory to turn it into a brake light. Dual exhaust out the back to make her breathe better and look better. Coming off that rear diffuser, which happens to look really nice. But take a look at the roof of the car. There's kind of a little uh, V design in there. And the concept there was to bring the air over the hood, over the, over the roof of the car, have it pushed down to the trunk to give it a little bit better downforce at speed. That's why they did that. It looks really cool.
On the front of the car, projector halogen headlights, because that's what we do these days. Nice headlights, they look good, but also driving behind them uh, projects the low beam headlight on the road, so you have good low beam performance. Turn signals are mounted low on the bumper there. And uh, while we're talking about cool stuff, the rear differential on this thing is made by Torsen. It's a limit slip differential, and uh, it's a 410 rear end. Us Toyota guys go, wow, that's quite a towing rear end. But I think if you're going to have a car that you want to come out of the hole quick, go around the corners fast, be able to drift, you probably want that 410 rear differential. But that's a really low towing gear in a truck. That's pretty sweet. Some pretty neat suspension bits I want to point out here, and then I'll pop under the hood. The uh, front suspension is McPherson strut, double wishbone, excuse me, double wishbone out back, but take a look at what they did with that little arm right there. They kept it tucked more on the outside, not under the engine bay, so you, get, you can keep that engine mounted low. And let's take a look under the hood. So this is Subaru's boxer engine. It's a two liter, 200 horsepower, way at the top of the revs. About 151 pound feet of torque, right around 4,600 RPMs. The D4S is talking about Toyota's direct fuel injection, but nice looking engine bay here. Get you a look on the inside. I'll be right back. 